this stuff, from, from, the, from the chemical level all the way up to the organismal level, all of things work together to maintain what's called homeostasis. Now, homeostasis essentially means balance. It is maintaining balance of the internal body conditions, or maintaining internal balance. Regardless of what happens out here, the chemicals, the cells, the tissues, the organs, all of that stuff works together to maintain internal balance. Now, why is it important to maintain internal balance? If you don't maintain internal balance, you get sick and eventually <laughs> you die. When you eat a candy bar, right after you eat that candy bar, your blood glucose, your blood sugar does what? Goes up, right? And your body says, that's okay for a little bit, but within two hours you want that back down. Otherwise, it's like putting too concentrated Kool-Aid through your blood vessels. So, you don't want your glucose level to stay high. Your blood gets too thick. It literally does. So, the body has a way to bring that back down. Does that make sense? Okay. So, that process of, of keeping everything in balance, we, we maintain homeostasis by something called feed, feedback mechanisms. Feedback, what that means is... There's a, there's a give and take. There is information that is received, and then a response is produced. Normal room temperature. If something disturbs the room temperature, there is a thermometer that detects that rise in temperature. So in that little box, in that thermostat, there's a, there's a temperature detector in there. And then we set that thermostat. We have a set point. We said we want it to be 72 degrees in here. If the temperature goes up, if that thermometer level begins to rise, then it's supposed to do what? Kick on and blow some cold air in here and bring the temperature back down, right? Send a signal to the air conditioner. The air conditioner cuts on, blows cool air, and hopefully the temperature goes back down. Well, that, that is a feedback mechanism. Feedback mechanisms have three parts whether it's a thermostat on the wall or whether it's in your body. The first part of a feedback me mechanism is called the receptor. The receptor is monitoring, is detecting what's going on. It's the detector. In, in our example here, the receptor would be the thermometer. It detects what we call a stimulus, a change. Now, the receptor detects a, a change and it sends a signal to the control center. So the control center receives the signal from the receptor. And then it sends a signal out to the third part, which is the effector. And if everything's working correctly, hopefully what the effector does is produce a response. So our thermometer would be the receptor, the thermostat would be the control center, the air conditioner would be the effector. Now, your body has to maintain normal body temperature. Regardless if the air conditioning system in here is working or not, your body still has to maintain the internal temperature. So, if the room temperature begins to rise, what do we do? We sweat. Okay, so temperature rise is a stimulus. The response that we produce is sweating. So how do we get from it's hot in here to sweating? I mean, we don't even think about it. But thank goodness it happens. The receptors, where are the things that detect? How do you know it's hot? You have sensory neurons, nerve cells in your skin and actually in the brain as well that say, ooh, get hot. Because not only does your skin get hot, obviously if it's hot out here, your skin is going to get hot, so it makes sense to have receptors there that say it's getting hot. But what happens is as the skin gets hot, that heat is transmitted into the bloodstream. You have lots of capillaries and lots of blood vessels, right? That blood is circulated around the body. The, the fluid that surrounds the brain is called spinal fluid. We'll talk about that later. Okay. That is made out of the blood, so if the blood temperature goes up, that fluid gets hot, and now the cells in the brain realize it's getting hot. Does that make sense? Okay. So you get your brain, the brain is like, I don't like it hot. You know, why is a high fever bad? Because it fries your brain. Not good. So you have sensors in a couple of different places here that send that information to a part of the brain called the hypothalamus. The effectors, we already talked about one of the effectors. The response was what? Sweating. Sweating. So the effector would be the what? What makes sweat? Sweat glands. Sweat glands, yeah. <laughs> okay, makes sense? If you um, see somebody and you say, man, they're hot. Well, they're hot. <laughs> <laughs> they're temperature hot. If you look at somebody, how can you tell that the 
that body temperature is increased? Well, they're sweating, but other than that. Their skin's flushed. You know. Yeah, their, their, their face is red, right? Particularly mine, because I've got, like, no melanin anyways. You know. Yeah, why does the face get red? You have blood vessels. You have capillary, or actually, that's the arterioles. You've got arterioles. Little blood vessels, tiny little arteries. An arterial is just a little artery. We'll get to that in AP2. But it's a tubular structure, right? So it's got smooth muscle in the wall of that, of that tube. And what happens is one of the, the, the smooth muscles begin to relax so that more blood flows through those arterioles. And so blood is, is shunted to the blood vessels in your skin. And so because there's more blood, you turn red. Well, how does that help you with heat? Carries it away from you. Yeah, you're, you're basically a big radiator. You're trying to get rid of that body heat. The sweat forms, the more blood that's coming through the area heats that sweat up, it evaporates and takes the heat away. Have you ever used those spray cans like to clean the little air, compressed air cans? What happens when you use that on your keyboard or whatever? What happens to the can? Yeah, you, co- you know why? Because as that gas is escaping, it's taking heat away. I learned that this summer. Isn't that cool? So the, so the, the gas that remains in the can is colder because as that gas is released, it takes heat with it. Isn't that cool? This process, the whole the thermostat process or the actual body thermostat process, this is a type of feedback called negative feedback. Negative, when I say the word negative, you think what? No, this is good. What this means is negative means to go back, to reverse most of the internal conditions in your body. Things like your your blood sugar level, your blood pressure, your body temperature are controlled by negative feedback mechanisms. Because what happens is stuff goes up and we want to bring it back down. Or stuff goes down and we want to bring it back up. We talked about if you eat a candy bar, your blood sugar goes up. The pancreas produces insulin. That brings the blood sugar back down. Negative feedback. Obviously, if there's negative feedback, there's also positive feedback, right? Very few things are controlled by positive feedback. In positive feedback, you don't go back to normal. It keeps getting stronger. We say that the the original stimulus is enhanced. How many of you have had kids? Okay. Childbirth is positive feedback. I have not. I've seen the video. I think it's a physically impossible thing to happen. Right before the child gets ready, right there in that ninth month, the child's getting ready to be born, what's the first thing that happens? What happens to the head? Yeah, normally, unless it's going to be a, what do you call it, breach? Yeah, sorry. The baby flips over, and the head begins to press on the inside of the cervix. All right? There are sensors, receptors, in the cervix that says, whoa! Those receptors send a signal up to your pituitary gland, which is sitting in the bottom base of your brain, the pituitary gland releases a hormone called oxytocin. Now, if this doesn't happen and the baby's been there a year and a half, you go to the doctor <laughs> and they'll give you something called pitocin, right? Yeah, that's just artificial oxytocin. The oxytocin enters the bloodstream, rushes back down to the smooth muscles, muscles, smooth muscles in the wall of the uterus, and it says to the smooth muscles, contract. Well, that presses on the poor baby's butt, which shoves its head even further down into the cervix which sends more signals to the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland releases more oxytocin, and that's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until you pass out, you get an epidural, <laughs> or the baby is poor, right? Cervix dilates, you know, catching, watch your mouth hand it to you. That's positive feedback. We don't want most of the things in our body. If, if everything is controlled by positive feedback, if your blood sugar went up, it just keep going up. This, you don't want that to happen. You want most things controlled by negative feedback. You want to bring it back to normal. Another example of positive feedback is blood clotting. In A and P2, we'll talk about the cardiovascular system. We'll talk about how blood clotting works. But you want you don't want to you want that blood to clot pretty quickly. You don't want to bleed to death, right? Okay, so that's a that's a positive feedback loop. But most things are controlled by negative feedback.